Ladies and gentlemen, there was a bizarre assumption from the opening opposition that the same people that they said would control or were controlling the country now through military means, were terrorizing the people, that the same people in the Zion PF they said were going to fragment, would give up power peacefully at some unspecified point in the future, just so long as we waited. What our extension is going to be about is the way that real internal transfers of power happen which is violent, which is characterized by regimes that become more extreme as they try to hang on to power, which is characterized by democratic groups that become undemocratic and populaces that resent the West more and more as sanctions hurt them more and more, destroying the potential for long-term change in Zimbabwe. But before we get on to that, I want to extend on a couple of other planks in the bubble first. Firstly, there'll be a long civil war. Here are some facts about the military of Zimbabwe. It has four tanks. And then from North Korea. <laughs> in contrast, to pick a country in Africa at random, South Africa has 167 of them and it has an arms deal with the United States. Zimbabwe has 29,000 troops. South Africa, again, to pick just one country, has 103,000 and has that kind of support from other countries. It's not 24% of GDP that Zimbabwe spends, it's 5%, and even if it is 24%, then 24% of essentially nothing, which it is not. This team said the support of the South African military is built on payments. That is true of Zimbabwe, but not of South Africa. The support of the Zimbabwean military is built on patronage from the, uh, from the Zion PF. Firstly, they're less supportive now because their pay is worth less now that each Zimbabwean dollar is uh, now that each Zimbabwean dollar um, is worth 143, 143 million to the US dollar. And secondly, once it becomes obvious that, that patronage is going away really, really soon, the reason to fight is gone. Because there is no ideological basis behind something here. There is just money and patronage and corruption. But thirdly, we'd say that our opening half told you that one of the problems with Iraq was that there was no one to take over in Iraq and no new government. They were somewhat right about that. Where they were wrong was that there were clearly established opposition groups like large Shia groups with clear leaderships, like a 10,000 strong Shia army that were radically anti-Western, that do not exist in Zimbabwe, that are not there to prevent the kind of crisis that we had in Iraq. Fourthly, they told us that the colonial narrative is a bit difficult when you've got the ANC on the side. And fourthly, they told us that there'd be long-term democracy that would be hurt by this. We're going to tell you why long-term democracy is hurt by conflicts that drag on. Secondly, we heard alternatives. The first of those was waiting. We heard that there is a leader who controls the grassroots of Zion PF who will help us. That grassroots doesn't exist when Zion PF has a support of 10 to 18 percent of the population. The only support that does exist is from a military that will cling to the patronage networks it has as much as possible against an unarmed people and can only be uprooted by someone who can get rid of those patronage networks. But what's more, waiting doesn't work when the NDC has no weapons, has no internal military power and no ability, even with vast popular support, nearly 90% at the moment, to actually demand change. The second option is sanctions, and I'm going to talk in our extension about why they're so bad. So our extension is about why these long drawn out changes of power that often involve military struggles are so bad for countries like this. First reason, because the changeover of power makes these countries worse. We heard Robert Mugabe is old, we heard that he will die. We will acknowledge that people die. What happens? What happens when they do? What we heard was you get fragmentation of the ruling party that makes them more powerful. Here's what really happens, and it has happened in African states where the ruling party's power has broken down and you get a power vacuum. You get various different elements in that party taking up arms in order to control the nation and control the country and citizens being poor in the past. And for a group that only has support of the military, that is precisely what will happen. When you've got precisely the generals that they talked about, who have specific interests in power remaining in their hands, not wanting to be victims of other generals who might string them up by landlords. But you also get a situation, secondly, where you get crackdowns by the ruling party to attempt to entrench their power. So I'm going to talk about more in a second. And the third, the most important problem with why it makes it worse, is because you get Democrats who turn to war. Here's what happens under the opposition's model. The NBC gets so sick of being murdered, I'll take you in one second, gets so sick of being murdered, gets so sick of being attacked, gets so sick of, despite the fact they've got a power sharing agreement, their wives being kidnapped and murdered, that they decide to take up arms. Go ahead. If all these are universal features of internal military regimes changing, why are none of them present in the transition between Fidel, Turrell, and Castro? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mention that. I'll take it. 
Go ahead. Just if, these are, the if these are universal features of internal changes among military regimes, why are none of them found in the transition between Fidel to Raul Castro? Because we're always his brother. Oh, no. <laughs> And he's sort of imprisoning people in a really, really horrible country. Um, okay. What happens when the NBC is forced to fight? Two things. One, they win worse than the forces of the whole world at large do. They win with more deaths because it is more likely that the entire PM will believe that they can win the fight. They win with more death because it is more likely that, that fight will go on in the streets between various different warring elements because there are more factions. But thirdly, we think they become a worse ruling party in the future because they have sold out to military elements that have been part of the basis for their support. So we think, for instance, that if Nelson Mandela had not taken support as a peaceful leader, but with the continued support of Nkonto and Sisway, that South Africa would be, would be a worse country because that new democracy would be beholden to military leaders and it's very good. And that's exactly why Mugabe was such a bad leader. Because rather than the Muzariba regime taking shape in Zimbabwe, as it should have, a real democratic election taking place in 1980, you had Robert Mugabe beholden to military leaders that he had to keep popping up. Second arm of our extension. Regimes with nothing to lose hurt people in a way at least equivalent to the harms of war. They don't want war. Why? Because it destroys infrastructure. That's what's happening now. And there's no tax dollars being created to keep it up. And there's no roads to get things to people. And with the very NGOs that should be giving food to people aren't there. That's what happens when wheat is dying on the, on the whatever wheat grows on. You also get increasingly irrational policies by governments that are trying to hold on that strike out at wider and wider portions of the population as it becomes more and more obvious that more people are against them. But finally, you radicalise the population against you by making sanctions the basic image of the West. And that's precisely what's happening now in Zimbabwe. But people are blaming the West for sanctions. If we had invaded Iraq in 1992, then the people wouldn't have been radicalised by a decade of sanctions against it. They would have risen up exactly as they did at George H. W. Bush's call and not oppose the United States to the people that cause 120,000 children to die every year. Their idea of the transfer of power is wrong. We've shown you that, that transfer of power will make the country worse now, worse when it becomes a democracy if it happens, and worse for everyone because that population will be radicalised. This important motion must stand.